Hi everyone, and thanks for joining me today. My name is Merab, and I decided to create this series of videos to help technical writers become familiar with Adobe FrameMaker. FrameMaker is a popular tool used today in the technical writing world to create documents. To learn more about me, visit my website, www.meravb.com. This video series is aimed at technical writers who are new to FrameMaker and will help familiarize you with the user interface and workspaces. This first video builds the foundation for our next videos by introducing the GUI, or graphical user interface of FrameMaker. We will also look at the predefined workspaces available in FrameMaker and how to set up your own workspace. With that said, let's get started. When you open up FrameMaker for the first time, you will see the following screen. There are a few options when working with documents. You can open a recent item, create a new item such as a document or book, or open a pre-existing template. If you would like additional training or support, you can check out the resources, Adobe products, or stay up to date with the latest Adobe news. You will also notice the menu bar. If you move horizontally across the menu bar, you will notice that most of the menu options are currently unavailable. These options will become available once we begin working with our FrameMaker file. For today's lesson, I'm going to open the recent item Merav.fm. Notice that .fm is the extension name used for FrameMaker files. Once your file is open, you will see the following screen. The user interface can be a bit overwhelming for first-time users, but don't worry. By the end of this lesson, you will have the basic tools and knowledge you need to navigate around the interface. Let's begin by focusing on the menu bar and the different options. First, we have the file menu, where you open, save, import, export, and print your file. Then, we see the Edit menu, which you use to cut, copy, paste, spell check, and update your file. Next is the Format menu, where you can change the text, paragraph, and page settings. The View menu is where you can choose to show or hide the toolbars, pods, page borders, rulers, and text symbols. You can also adjust the color settings from this menu. Then, we have the Special menu, where you can control features such as page breaks, anchored frames, conditional text, track edits, and generated lists. The graphics menu gives you editing options when working with graphics. Similarly, the table menu is where you control table options. The CMS menu gives you the option of connecting to other content management systems. This is a more advanced feature, which depending on your workplace, you may not use. The frame script menu gives you the option of installing and running frame scripts or programs that perform functions automatically, such as deleting empty lines and adjusting the table width to a specified number. The window menu is where you can choose which toolbars and pods to show or hide. You can also switch between a number of currently open files. The help menu gives you access to the FrameMaker user guide along with online tutorials and account information. Next, we have the UI visibility button. Use this button to view the document without any toolbars or menus. Click the button once to enter UI visibility mode and click the button again to exit UI visibility mode. In addition, we have the arrange documents button. Use this button to view a number of documents at once, horizontally, vertically, or a combination of both. Use these views when comparing one or more documents with one another. Lastly, we have the Screen Mode button. Use this button to view your document in standard screen mode, full screen mode with the menu bar, or full screen mode without the menu bar. To exit full screen mode without the menu bar, right-click and choose Toggle Screen Mode. 
The last item on the menu bar is the Workspace drop-down menu. As a default setting, FrameMaker files are opened using the authoring workspace. This drop-down menu consists of other workspaces, which we will go back to later in this lesson. For now, let's use the authoring workspace. Now that you are familiar with the menu bar, let's take a look at the toolbars. At the moment, I have all my toolbars showing. To show all these toolbars in your file, perform the following steps. From the View menu, stand on Toolbars and select Show All. Similarly, you can hide all your toolbars at any time by selecting Hide All. The first toolbar we see is the Graphics toolbar, which is useful for drawing shapes, changing colors, and setting patterns. This toolbar is automatically aligned on the left side of the screen. To place this toolbar with the other horizontal toolbars, click and drag until you see a blue line, then release the mouse. Use the Quick Access Bar toolbar to create, open, save, import, or print your document. You can also clear, cut, copy, paste, undo, and redo your actions. The character, paragraph, and table catalogs are predefined formats for text, words, and tables. Use the text formatting toolbar to change the font style, size, and capitalization. Use the table formatting toolbar to highlight, add, and delete rows from your table. Use the Paragraph Formatting Toolbar to adjust the tabs, orientation, and spacing of your paragraph. Use the Object Alignment Toolbar to adjust the position, alignment, and rotation of an object, such as a picture. Use the Object Properties Toolbar to bring to the front, reshape, flip, and scale an object. Use the Track Edits toolbar to enable, disable, view, accept, and reject track edits. Now that you are familiar with the toolbars, let's focus on what we call pods. Pods are commonly used dialog boxes, each one with a different purpose. You can see the following pods already open. Paragraph Catalog, Font Catalog, Table Catalog, O Catalog, Marker, and Find and Change. If you don't see these pods in your file, perform the following steps. From the Window menu, stand on Pods and select the pods you wish to open. To open additional pods, perform the following steps. From the View menu, stand on Pods and select the pods you wish to open. Now let's review how to manage pods. To expand a pod and show more detail, click the double arrow once. To collapse a pod and show only the icon and name, click the double arrow again. To close a pod, right click and select Close. When pods are grouped together, they are called a tab group. To expand a tab group, click the pod name once. To close a tab group, right-click and choose Close Tab Group. To rearrange individual pods, drag and drop them. To switch to a specific pod, click the pod name. Now that we have reviewed the menu bar, toolbars and pods, I'd like to return to the topic of workspaces. Remember that workspaces are accessed through the Workspace drop-down menu. Until now, we have been working in the Authoring Workspace. Let's look at the other predefined workspaces available to you. The blank workspace hides all the toolbars and pods. The Design Workspace shows the Quick Access Toolbar, the Paragraph, Character, and Table Designer tab group, and the Conditional Tags and Variables pods. The Manage Graphics Workspace 
shows the quick access, graphics, object alignment, and object properties toolbars, along with the align, runaround properties, anchor frame, and object properties tab group, and the hotspots pod. The review workspace hides all tabs and pods and shows only the quick access toolbar. To create your own workspace, choose which toolbars and pods you wish to show. Then, click the workspace drop down menu and choose save workspace. Type in the name of your workspace, for example, my workspace, and click OK. Now you can return to your customized saved workspace at any time. That's it for workspaces. I hope this lesson was helpful in teaching you the basic tools and knowledge required to navigate around the FrameMaker interface. To summarize, let's review the topics we covered in our lesson today. We reviewed the FrameMaker user interface, including the menu bar, toolbars, and pods. In addition, we looked at the various predefined workspaces and learned how to create our own customized workspace. I hope today's lesson was helpful in giving you the basic tools and knowledge you need to feel comfortable with the FrameMaker interface. Remember to like this video and share the link with others. Feel free to leave questions and comments below and subscribe to my channel to be notified as soon as I post a new video. Thanks for taking the time to join me today and tune in for my next FrameMaker lesson.